right. Uh, speaking of bad television sketch comedy, uh, we reviewed the fiasco from the Hardy compound that was part of the full gear. Full. I, they they should have called it fully loaded because I have a feeling all of the creative people were at the time that they belched this forth. But we reviewed the Hardy compound situation. All of the it creative was, people. <laughs> It was a compound fracture. We <laughs> reviewed it. And we read an email that we had gotten from one of our listeners who had a friend that worked as a, like one of the local crew people, uh, you know, a cable puller or somebody who helped with the light set up or transporting or set. I don't know if they had catering. They definitely had metal garbage cans out in the forest. So hopefully they used those garbage cans to put the catering in. But anyway, uh, the, the scraps. Uh, so we, we read the email, we talked about the match, we talked about the pay-per-view, and apparently, of all the people that 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 we said some pretty harsh things about in our review of the fiasco that was that AEW pay-per-view, I would have not put in the top 10, or even 15, that we said harsh things about this person that should get pissed, but apparently Rebby Hardy got mad at us. Is this what I'm hearing on, on a Twitter? Apparently, I saw a few people send in stuff about this, but not too many. And I'm, I don't know. I, I, I asked you off air. I said, did we, did we really go in on Rebby Hardy? I don't even remember even seeing her in the clip. I, I, we mentioned in the email that, that they had shot something with her playing a piano. And then I, I told you, I said, I don't even remember seeing that. And apparently it was in the part that I fast forwarded. Yeah, well, after. you missed most of the second half of that fiasco because you fast forwarded. It went on I saw twice it. as long as, as what the point that I got out of it. It went on for a while longer. You missed Sammy getting locked in their compound or garage or whatever the hell it was. And then the piano playing commenced <laughs> I, <laughs> and oh, the horror continued. <laughs> <laughs> the parade of terror. <laughs> um. <laughs> You will recall that I executed my fast forward rule when Gangrel and Shane Helms had just shown up and Matt Hardy had been in this fight with Sammy Guevara, fight allegedly for however long, but suddenly Matt stopped and and he and Shane looked at each other and Matt said something, referring back to when they did something in Impact and talked about long-term storytelling. And I said, if they can't even pretend to have a pretend fight all the way through what they're pretending to do without breaking that, then I'm, it's not worth my time. And I fast forwarded from there, but we read the email. We talked about the match and Rebby got upset because apparently she was painted in an unflattering light from, from the writer of the email. And, and I, and we did not present that email as if it was gospel truth in every step of the way. So I asked you, I said, well, should we, should he have, she, <laughs> should she have been offended? Did we say something really rotten? I say, you know what, instead of going back, let's just play again when we read the email and what we said to see if in the overall scheme of things, we were harder on Rebby Hardy than we were on anybody else on his program. What do you think? I'm going to play this now. I'm going to play it a little bit before the email, a little bit after the email, so it puts everything in the proper context, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Context is key. That's right. Here is, from this past week's drive through Jim Cornette reviewing Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. Elite deletion. Okay, I'm going to depart from our format here for a second. I'm going to read an email that I should have read, but I didn't see it. Kippelman sent it to me, but I didn't see it until just yesterday when I was going through some stuff, and then it was too late to read it before this match. But it would have it would have been a spoiler on the next event that was on this show, Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. I think you were furnished a copy of this email too. You may have seen it, but somebody wrote to us at the drive-through. Hello, Jim. Love the show. I live in Pinehurst, North Carolina. This week, the AEW crew came down to film at Matt and Jeff Hardy's house. I think it's Matt's house. I think I don't think he and Jeff live together. But anyway, in nearby Cameron, North Carolina, uh, the brothers are neighbors that bought all the land down one road outside of Cameron for themselves and their father, who is whom is known locally as Legend. 
Anyway, someone I know was hired to set up and work the lighting for the Matt and Sammy match, which they filmed Wednesday and Thursday night last week. This is apparently for the upcoming pay-per-view. My friend that doesn't watch the product noted to me that it was the stupidest thing she'd ever been a part of. She noted that they had over 300 people working the production. 300. I th that's got to be an exaggeration. And asked me if this was normal. I just shook my head in embarrassment. She said the cost for such a production was beyond anything she had ever seen and also related that she had never heard of AEW nor knew it was on mainstream television. And, of course, we're talking about uh, the, the people who set up and work lighting and pull cable and stuff. They, always, they don't just bring in everybody for that. They have local people that do these things in these various areas. Uh, apparently, the rule number one was for nobody to speak to Rebby Hardy unless she spoke to them and don't park any production trucks, vehicles, or put any equipment by her car, which was pink. Rebby filmed a scene in the warehouse by Matt's home where she played piano, yet everyone was made to wait outside the building when she was filmed, save the camera operators. Apparently, it took a long time, and everybody was just standing around waiting. From there, they brought Matt and Sammy in to start filming, whom my friend thought was 16 years old. Sammy, I believe, not Matt Hardy. Regardless, she said Sammy was probably the nicest guy on the set, but she wondered again how any of this was wrestling, even though there was a ring on set. She just kept remarking on how much money was being spent or blown beyond the over 300 people there, whom all were booked into Pinehurst Resort hotels. Oddly, they all got double queen-bedded rooms per person, even people that lived around the area. Mind-boggling. They brought in a monster truck and had it run over a golf cart, or try to as it only knocked it over. They brought in other wrestlers, two guys that they had to reshoot over and over doing flips because they couldn't get them right, whom, based on the description, sounded like Private Party. All this stuff is coming to pass when I watch this show. They filmed a sequence where Matt and Sammy fired bazookas at each other that shot fireworks. They had to keep filming in the water by Jeff's house and a heavy sequence at a fountain when Matt couldn't get his dialogue right. The whole thing took all night, and during the time she said this guy was standing around acting giddy in a hoodie, whom after I showed her a picture confirmed it was your guy Tony Khan. She had no idea he was fronting the bill for all this. In fact, the entire time, everyone in production was remarking how much money was being wasted with an earshot of him. He didn't seem to care. In the end, Matt went over Sammy, which was filmed shortly before daylight. Again, she just wondered how much money the whole operation was and if this made any money. Again, I just felt embarrassed. My question, Jim, if you had to give an estimate on when AEW gets the plug pulled, when would it be? When the guy in the hoodie quits being giddy. You know, I got to jump in real quick. That email came in last week. Yes, it's and, it dated, wait a minute, it's dated uh, November 2nd. And one of the reasons, and I kick myself for this, one of the reasons it wasn't on last week's drive through was I'm reading it and I'm saying, this person could be working us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you I've, mean you'd seen it? I saw it and I said to myself, <laughs> there's no way, <laughs> little did I know, and I should have known better. I said, this person... Could be a mega AEW fan just trying to mess with us, sending us a false report for this match. And it was because of that that I didn't read it on last week's drive through. And when I was watching the little bits of this match, I actually watched because I executed my Matt Hardy rule, which is back uh -oh. now. I realized that the email was 100% factual and I, I kicked myself. I should have read it on last week's show. That's 100% my fault. Well, I'm pissed at you for another reason, because I sat down and watched this thing for quite a while. And by the way, the Rebby Hardy thing, when I worked at Sony Music, that was the Jennifer Lopez thing. When she came in the building, you weren't allowed to make eye contact with her. <laughs> and when Lauren Hill came in the building, you weren't allowed to call her Lauren. She was Miss Hill. Those were the two big ones I remember. <laughs> and then there were people like Ricky Martin who would come in and were just fantastic human beings. And it made you want to help them and work with them. Uh, but don't speak unless you're spoken to. Don't make eye contact with J-Lo. Which is fine. Just, you know, it gives you more time to look at her ass. 
Well, I wish I, that's very sexist and mis misogynistic. Yeah, I wish. It is. Well, there it is, Jim. There it is <laughs> in the proper context. Well, I don't know about the, I could use the word proper about any of that, but context, yes. Uh, did we, I, I, I don't see that we savaged Rebby Hardy in that, and it was the emailer's opinion uh, 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 relating what he was told from his friend that was on site as, as part of the crew, but I don't think we were particularly hard on Rebby in the context of that whole thing. Not at all. Uh, not at all. Especially since I pretty much ended up the whole thing was spitting on the microphone uh, over everybody <laughs> right. that was right. that was involved in that whole fiasco. <laughs> it was embarrassing to professional wrestling and was totally had nothing to do with what the wrestling business or anything it's ever been involved with was all about. Uh, but the, but they got and 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 I think Matt got hot, but he but it, it, was he hot because Rebby was hot or what did he say? I pulled up the tweets while we were talking about this here, or listening to the audio here. Some guy said, yeah, this is totally made up. As I've said in the past, a lot of the letters on the show are fake. Which, by the way, let me just quickly interject here. We have never made up an email for the drive-thru. We get thousands of emails a week for the drive-thru. I'm not saying some people haven't sent stuff in where maybe they're making something up, but we've never... Made no. up an email. Everything we've read on that show is an actual email that's come in. For the experience or the drive through we've never made up an email because dumb shits. The reason why that we read emails sometimes is to have some programming without having to make anything up. So Matt Hardy quote tweeted that guy and wrote, ha ha ha, only the best fabricated horse shit for their toxic lackeys. Now, wait, Matt Hardy is too old of, a, of an adult man to use the word toxic, isn't he? Or is, now is he trying to play with the Well, I guess he is trying to play with kids. What's more toxic? Our audience, our toxic lackeys, or his awful content? That's the problem. When you're using the word toxic after you've just committed an offense again, that, that Matt Hardy and his brother have, have racked and wrecked their bodies for, a profession that they have physically sacrificed for for all these years and now they participate in shit like this it just makes complete total joke out of it and shits in its face and and but we're toxic over here i think somebody's drinking the toxic kool-aid playing with the 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 young kids i think someone, anyway. someone just can't accept that his work sucks and has for a while well, but not, i've always been a fan of matt hardy's work when he was working Instead of doing, you know, fucking backyard independent cinema film level movie scenes, it's like a bunch of kids getting together. Hey, let's do a low budget movie instead of, hey, let's be a professional wrestling organization. And and him and Jericho and a couple of others are legitimate name stars that don't have to do that shit. Like it's a goddamn, hey, kids, let's put on a show crowdfunding fucking pro wrestling organization. They don't have to do that. So that's what's toxic to me. I've always been a fan of Matt Hardy's work. Remember when Matt Hardy several weeks ago came out and actually spoke like himself and, and he had been hurt and he was going to go home and heal up and, and, and it, it looked like, well, okay, they're going to drop all this shit and let Matt Hardy be Matt Hardy and train the young kids and, and be a, a veteran, you know, locker room leader. And the, he never takes a week off. He seconds, an underneath tag team for a couple weeks and then comes back and he's back in the throwing each other in the fucking lake of carnation instant milk or whatever the fuck it is. And by the way, in regards to this email, and I'm not going to say the person's name who sent it in because I don't want them to get harassed. But no, they, they would be the victims of harassment from that toxic audience that follows that AEW stuff. It was forwarded to you on the 2nd. It actually came in Sunday, November 1st at 10.30 a.m., and according to this email, the filming was done the previous Wednesday and Thursday night, which would be the 28th and 29th of October. I'm looking right now. That was a taped week of Dynamite. So no one was in Daly's place. Obviously, they were on Matt Hardy's property. So if anyone thinks the email's fake, go check that out. See if that's true. Really, the only things of question in this, based on, again, this came in on November 1st. 
300 people in production that sounds ridiculous and you pointed well, yes. it out right away yes and I'm and and by the way, when you when you're out in the middle of the woods in North Carolina at somebody's house, and there's a bunch of trucks and some vans and some light trees, and there's fifteen or twenty or twenty five people from the wrestling company wandering around, and another fifteen or twenty crew members, it looks like three hundred people. And as far as the Rebby Hardy thing, which again from the email, apparently the rule number one was for nobody to speak to Rebby Sky Hardy unless she spoke to them, and don't park any production trucks, vehicles or put any equipment by her car, which was pink. I, w- I would have said the same shit myself. <laughs> Don't park next to that. If I'd, especially if I'd paid for it. If I was either mad or Rebby, either one. Don't park anything and ding that pink car. Well, we don't know for a fact, because, again, we're just basing it off this email, which everything else in the email has turned out to be accurate, because it came in on the first. Including well the bazookas where they shot fireworks up each other's taints. But... This Rebby Hardy rule, this alleged Rebby Hardy rule, it doesn't say for sure that she knew about the rule. You're correct there. I mean, it wasn't she instituted this rule. It was we were told, don't park your car next to her car. Don't even look at her. Don't whatever it was said there. So, I mean, that doesn't in any way say that she was aware of the rule. But you asked about Rebby Hardy's tweets. I have found them here. The first one I see that references this. Uh, she retweeted something that Matt did, and she wrote, I can't believe you cut out the part where I told everyone there not to speak to me or look me in the eyes. Misleading! All in caps. So fucking tired of people lying on my name and talking shit like it never ends. And if I respond, I'm the problematic one. It's fucking exhausting. And then the only other one I see here... She found a sympathetic fan. Unfortunately, it seems some women in the wrestling industry can't have an opinion or voice of their own. It's completely toxic and needs the change, to which Rebby Hardy quote tweeted, Yet this is the third grown-ass man in three months who don't even know me to straight up make some shit up for likes and clicks. Yes, I'm easy to hate. So your little fake radio shows get hate listens Whenever my name is mentioned, but use really that pressed for material? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I think she thinks she was the focus of this whole segment. It, sound, it sounds like that it was the focus of, of our conversation there to, to malign her in some kind of way. And I think we've established that was not the intent, nor we thought it was the, the content of the thing. We didn't realize she was the, the centerpiece of that. We didn't realize that she was ducking because all of those planets were <laughs> whirling around her head. The, the gravitational pull of her, the center of the universe was so strong. I didn't realize she can get us clicks and likes. We'd be talking about her more often. Well, there you go. Hey, there you go. Click us and like us. If you want us to talk some more about Reb. No, <laughs> Rebby, we do apologize if you took this too seriously to heart. We were trying to criticize Matt doing one of the shittiest things I've ever seen in the history of professional wrestling you were just collateral damage but we i'm sure brian you you apologize don't you no i don't apologize for what if we caused anguish and heartache heartache by the numbers we read an email which spoiled their awful wrestling match but we didn't read it before the match so we didn't really spoil it we read it after the fact and by the way it says a lot about the sloppy shop over there that word got out and got sent to us on november 1st at 10 30 a.m Says a lot about that sloppy shop over there. But no, we didn't. And she was a minor thing in here. And we don't know if it's true or not true. We don't know if she was aware. We don't know if Matt Hardy went up to people and said, look, stay away from my wife's car and please just avoid her at all costs. We have no idea (laughs) what the hell happened there. I don't know if he would have phrased it like that. We have no idea. So no, there's nothing to apologize for here. It seems like they're trying to get some attention off this while accusing us of using her name to get clicks and likes. Well, and also it kind of, you know, I don't want to use Rebby in the same sentence as, as it's kind of tit for tat, but this production that they did out in their, in their mud uh, of their compound out there in North Carolina, this was the one where that Matt had Sammy taken bumps in the mud and said, Oh, get up, get up. The old folks will think this is a mud show. So, theoretically 
even though when we reviewed it, I forgot that was even in there and I didn't mention it till later. <laughs> Some people say, why didn't you say anything about that? Cause it was so fucking silly, but I'm just, I'm in, I'm in their heads because I'm all they think about all the fans think about and all the guys think about they either want to fucking zing me or they want to get a compliment from me or the fans want to hear them zing me or whatever the fuck I can't blame them at least that's interesting it's unlike the trend of the rest of their program but nevertheless so since Matt was the first one to insinuate me into that at the taped conflict that they did at their at their compound in North Carolina then me reading an email about somebody's shitty experience helping shoot it was merely the tat for the previous tit. So Rebby came in with the next tit rather than a tat. My tit was really a tat, but her tat was really a tit. I wish Matt Hardy would teleport himself back to 2001. <sighs> I think we all do. Anyway, Rebby, I do. I I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, if I've caused you any anguish or any heartache or any sorrow, any pain, blues, and agony and frustration over mentioning you in an email that somebody else wrote about to sing a thing that somebody else said, then I apologize. But folks out there, if you have a real issue that you need to talk to somebody about that is causing you problems, that you're anguishing over not just hurt feelings because somebody didn't like a bad segment that you did on television have we all been there then call the folks at better help folks if you need a therapist a licensed professional therapist that's not available in your uh, community or in on in person or that you don't want to see in person because it's currently a pandemic then you can go to betterhelp.com and get hooked up with professional counseling done securely online. They've got a broad range of ac expertise available, and you can do this worldwide. It's not just an American thing. They're available around the globe. You can set up an account, log into it anytime, send a message to your counselor. You get responses. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so there's no waiting rooms and no, no venturing out in public. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if you need to find the right match for you. And you can go to their website and read the testimonials that they post from the over 1 million people that are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And I got a sneaking suspicion that a lot of people listening to this program need mental help. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of people could use someone to talk to during these hard and pressing times. Yes, you need somebody to talk to instead of me because I'm rotting your brain. <laughs> Folks, We everybody needs, I think that was a song, everybody needs somebody to talk to and BetterHelp can be there for you. And if you go to BetterHelp.com slash JCE, then you can get 10% off your first month's services. That's a special offer for the experienced listeners. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash J-C-E. 10% off your first month's services. We can't do any better than that, for heaven's sake. Join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Be one of them. Be one of us. Go to BetterHelp.com today. Or even yesterday, if you have time. And if you have other AEW spoilers, send them in. Now we'll read them on the air. Yes, we will. Anything you can spoil for these. <laughs> these just, they're just, they're sore losers is what they are. And they, and they just, and they can't take it. They can dish it out, but they can't take it. I was the one that got knocked on their television with the old mud show man. I respond with a, a, a an independent review and I'm maligned maligned i say i'm sick of these grown-ass men <laughs> coming up and <laughs> yanking me all around i don't know what the fuck she was saying in that she lost me around the far turn on some of that modern verbiage you and your toxic lackeys and, and let me once again reiterate that any grown adult man that uses the word toxic as relates to relationships or people or whatever the fuck is not a grown-ass adult man for heaven's sake, just say asshole. It covers everything and it sounds better. Your fans hate my, my work. They're toxic.
Maybe your work is toxic. <laughs> hey, the cult of Cornette fans are like those psychedelic toads. They're not toxic. They may look ugly, but you lick one of them, you have a great time. 